All right, uh, th this topic's about President Eisenhower's ancestries, ancestors that lived in Lower Paxton Township. And it's not a very well known, some people have heard this story, so I've researched this topic as well. President Eisenhower's great great grandfather lived in the Linglestown area. Again, President Eisenhower's great grandfather was born in the Linglestown area. Yeah, and this is all true. All right. If you look up President Eisenhower's family lineage online, and that's where I got this, you'll find that it shows his great-great-grandfather Peter Eisenhower died in Lower Paxton Township, and his great-grandfather Frederick was born in Lower Paxton Township. All right, this story starts with the original Eisenhower immigrant, Hans Nicholas Eisenhower, came here from what is today Germany, it wasn't Germany back then, came here in 1741, there it is, aboard the ship Europa, which actually sank in down around Lewes, Delaware as it was coming in. So those people were lucky to even get here. Uh, they, they're processed through Philadelphia. They settle in the Bethel Township area, Fredericksburg, Le Lebanon County, but back then this was all Lancaster County, you know. And he had a wife and three sons. This is, a, this is a map I have of the original Eisenhower homestead in Fredericksburg. This is Fredericksburg, the town right here. And, and the, the name, it's hard to read, but his name is on here is Nicholas Ironcutter, which must be what Eisenhower means, they were blacksmiths. So his farm, when you go out 78 and you're traveling just north of Fredericksburg, I think you're cutting through his farm right there. So they settle in Fredericksburg, but Hans's one son, Peter, decides he's going to sell the family farm. Oh, this is about Hans. Okay, his wife. Oh, I know. He had three sons, Peter, Jonas, and Martin. Anyway, Peter decides in 1779 to sell the family farm in Fredericksburg and move to the Harrisburg area. And in 1779, he, in July, he buys 130 acres from a name that if you've lived in the area long, Abraham Latchall. Remember Latchall's lumber yard there where the giant is on 39? So yeah, Earl Latchall. So, Son Peter buys a farm from Abraham Latchall, and it's hard to see somewhere in here. It, oh, here, Paxton Township. Back then, it wasn't even upper, middle, or lower Paxton. It was just Paxton Township. Uh, this is his will, Peter's will, and again, it references Township of Paxton. And I won't bore you with who he's given money to, but he, he, he wills a lot of it to his son John. Now this is about John, son of Peter. Old John, he lived per, to be pretty old too, he was like 87. He's actually buried in St. Thomas Cemetery near Parkway East. And what's interesting here, the will of John Eisenhower, now here it's Lower Paxton Township, and he's willing some people some things and he makes his grandson, John Unger, his executor. So remember that name. You can't, uh, you can't see it, it's a picture of John. Uh, it's not much to look at, all right? Like I said, he is still, he's buried, still buried. Yeah, once you're buried, you're buried, generally. This was an article that was written at about, about in the 80s saying that there are Eisenhowers buried in the area. So old John's tombstone is in St. Thomas Cemetery. John Eisenhower had a daughter, Katharina. She married David Unger. So there's that name again. They had a son, 
and you can't read it. John George Unger was their son. So he's John Eisenhower's grandson, Peter's great-great-grandson, all right? And the reason I'm pointing that out to you is I have it on a map back there, but I was curious, where was this farm? So by piecing together who inherited the farm, right here on this 1875 map, which I have hanging back here in the corner, it has J.G. Unger. And he owned a lot of them, 300 and some acres. In trying to piece this together, I think this is where the Forest Hills development currently is. So it was back off the mountain, maybe, you know, back off 39, maybe a mile into the mountain. I do not, in, in 1952, a lady did all this research. And again, these will be online. If you check out linglestowncivic.com. We'll have these, you can get these on our website. But she actually found a picture of the original house, which is what you can't really see it. I apologize that one. And then her, the son John had built a second house, and that house was at least there in 1952. But I have a feeling when they went to build the Forest Hills development, they were demolished because they're not back there now. All right, Pat. And then this is just to summarize President Eisenhower's lineage, Hans first settler. Peter was actually, how old? He wasn't born here. He came over with them on the Europa. Has a son, Frederick. That's John's brother. Frederick moves the family in the 1820s up to Elizabethville in northern Dauphin County. That's where Ike's grandfather, Jacob Frederick, and Ike's father, David, was born in Elizabethville, Pennsylvania. And then uh, the family moves to Kansas in 1878. And then President Eisenhower was actually born in Texas, but then the family moved to Kansas. Everyone thinks he's from Kansas is where he grew up. But it's just kind of a neat part of local history that we actually had a president's ancestors live in our township. So. I think that's the last slide, Pat. Yes. Pardon? I repeat, repeat her question. Did, oh, President Eisenhower had, yeah, the Eisenhower farm down at Gettysburg, yeah. You know, and it, I don't know, it kind of makes you wonder, like, was he trying to get back to his roots? You know, I don't know. but. Uh, yeah, he, his farm, I think, is, Nash, is now a national park, I think, in Gettysburg. So, any other questions? But that's the Eisenhower connection to our area. Thanks. Thank you.